What's up, my mathletes? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and this is the second part, so kind of a part two of looking at polynomials and x-intercepts and determining whether the x-intercept bounces or passes through. And all that's going to be tied into the multiplicity or the degree of the given factor. So let's go ahead and take a look at our notes from the other day, so make sure that you have those out. All right, so again, we're looking at, so here is our chart from the other day. So make sure you've got that filled out correctly because you're gonna pull some examples from here and that's where these are all coming from. So the previous video, we just took a look at bouncing and passing along. So we did these two together uh, and then you should have two others on your own. Again, pulling functions from that chart uh, that we did previously. Now we're gonna take a look at the odd functions. All right, so odd degree of multiplicity. So there's a couple of things we already know about this factor. We know that the zero is going to be at positive two. So if we go over to two and we put a zero, so we know that's where one of the zeros is going to be. So right here at two, we would have a zero. Now my degree right here, my degree, so my degree on this is odd. Also, if I look at the other one, other function to the right of it, the degree right there is odd. And then it's also cubed. Um, and that. So let's take a look, uh, pause the video, put that in Desmos, and then let's see kind of what that first one looks like. All right, so here in this example, we've got our x minus two cubed part, right? So here we are. And if I notice, so, you know, I'm, I'm all zoomed out here, but I've got this piece. So uh, let's kind of get in there. And Desmos is so super cool like that. So here we are. There's our zero at two zero, which is cool. And notice the shape of our function is cubic in nature, which is awesome. And Desmos also helps us confirm that our y-intercept would be zero and negative eight, which we could get from just plugging zero into anywhere there's an x is and doing the arithmetic. So cool. So there's our sketch for this guy. So, uh, you know, kind of goes through somewhere down here and then comes up, uh, you know, and that's so we want to make it actually not look too much like a line. We definitely want to get it, um, you know, some curve and everything in there. So there we go. Looks cubic to me. And right here, again, so zero, negative eight would be our y-intercept. So there's a sketch of that one. And then let's take a look at the, this guy over here. So x plus two squared. So I know on this one, I'd have one zero at negative two, because that's my first factor, x plus two cubed. And our second factor is x plus one squared, which means at minus one, I would have another factor. Next, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit here, um, just because I want a little bit of space in that. So I've got these two, two values right here. So x minus two, I've got one zero, and x minus one, I've got the other zero. All right, so those are gonna be the things. What we wanna look at is, again, on this spot right here, the x plus two cubed, what happens right there at that x value. Does it bounce or does it pass through? You may have an assumption already about that. So cool, let's check that out and put that into Desmos. So hit pause, put it into Desmos, sketch it, and then let's see what we got. All right, so you should end up with something like this. And we look at it in Desmos. So, all right, so check this out, this is pretty cool. So we've got the, the our two zeros right here. So if we were to click on the function, it's kind of nice. Look, we see a zero right there. And then it gives us this spot, you know, because that's going to be a relative maximum of negative 1.4 for that x value. And the other zero over here is, boom, negative one zero. So that is awesome because it confirms we have our two zeros right there. So this one, you know, so when you sketch this, this is going to look something along those lines. Maybe your, your arch right here at this spot isn't as pronounced. But remember, that's going to be a relative max right there. And what's really cool is down here at negative one, uh, because that's at the bottom of a hill, that's gonna be a relative min. All right, so, th so those are our sketches. So here's what I want you to pay attention to, uh, you know, as you go through and do this. So on each one of our odd degree polynomials or odd degree factors of our polynomial, what happens? Does it bounce or does it pass through? All right, so there's gonna be something for you to take a look at. And then also on the function itself, you know, for these other two, again, Pick two other examples from the table. So where's the table? So pick two other examples where you notice that there is an odd degree. So maybe one like this. That one's got a, an odd degree uh, in there because you have a multiplicity of three. You've got uh, this one right here has a multiplicity of three. So pick one of those other ones uh, or both of them uh, and everything and, and take a look at that and see what it looks like in Desmos and then answer that question about, you know, how's the function behave at there. All right, so that's it. And then when you get done with all of that, take a look at all the sketches for all the polynomial functions we've done and analyze the domain and range of each one of them. And then write it using interval notation. 
All right, so that's it for this vid. I will catch up with you guys later. Have a wonderful, amazing day. I love you, and be good out there. Peace out, Cub Scouts.